Hi, this is Ian Ken with Science Weekly News at 6. Today we have a very special guest in our studio. The man who is responsible for the bananas that you will see in your local stores, Dr. P. Diddy. Thanks for having me, Ian. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. Now, before we get started, can you tell us a little about what you have done with bananas so far? Of course. Um, well, when man first discovered bananas, they were quite small, full of huge wood-like seeds, and not very, not very edible. But now, almost every banana you see in grocery stores today has been genetically modified so that they are more edible, their seeds are not there, and they grow bigger. Um, the biggest, uh, breakthrough, I guess you could call it, that me and my colleagues at the, uh, Tropical Agricultural Institute of the World has developed is that we have taken a gene from a green pepper and inserted it into bananas so that they can resist the B, uh, the, what is it, it's the BXW virus if I'm not mistaken, which, um, kills bananas all around the Great Lake areas of the Congo. So, you know, we're saving a lot of lives and a lot of people are going to be uh, benefiting from this. That's very interesting, but what would you have to say to the critics that say that GM crops are unhealthy and that we should just leave things the way that God intended? Okay. You know what? I've been hearing these critics for a while too, Ian. And, you know, they've been on my case for about three years now. And I'm getting sick and tired of these critics coming up to me and trying to talk. Now, what would you say to critics that say that you should just leave banana so the way... Are we still asking intended? these critics questions? Are we still asking these critics... Where's, where's, where's this guy going? This oh, my God! Oh, oh. So... What would you have to say to the critics that say what you're doing is just wrong and it's against what God intended? Well, because my manager has banned me from use of force, I will say that I don't believe in anything these critics are saying, but I do respect that they have the right to say it. However, my company has put more nutrients made the bananas bigger and ripen faster. So those critics, I cannot say what I'm about to say on TV. Hmm, quite. But scientists say that introducing a genes into plants may create a new allergen or cause a allergic reaction and sus suspect susceptible people. Man, I'm P. Diddy. Of course I know that. But I also know that it's not been 100% proven. Now, tell me that now tell me what the new thing that you're working on with bananas is. Well, actually, <laughs> um a little known fact is that 50% of our DNA um is shared by bananas. And um our next step is to try to incorporate splice genes from an unborn unborn human embryo into a banana. Well, why would you ever need to do that? Well, Ian, I'm glad you asked. Because a em human embryo grows, does most of its growing in the early stages of pregnancy. And if we can get this gene into a banana, it would mean the banana would grow exponentially within the first few weeks of it being planted. And we could harvest it faster, which means we could grow a lot more bananas within the same year to save a lot of time and money. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thanks for coming with us today, P. Diddy. Of course I'm going to be at that Playboy bottle party. I'm P. Diddy. Yeah, man, you tell him if I catch him slipping again, I'm going to put one up in his head. Wait. Oh my god! Mutant bananas! <laughs>
Mm-hmm. <laughs>